Today we have uh, the first uh, South Prudential uh, session of Simba um, after this season and the strange conditions we've had. Uh, so we have the pleasure of uh, today's speaker, which is uh, David Martinez. He is uh, studying several things which I cannot explain, but he will. And he, the, the title of his talk is Topological Models of Infinity Voids. David, when you want the floor is yours. Okay, so hello to all. Uh, I'm David Martinez, as you said. And uh, nowadays I am an associate uh, lecturer here at the University of Barcelona, waiting to start my PhD. So, um, the topic of today is, as Dick says, the political model of infinite two point, which, is, which will be basically an introduction to the topic of my final uh, master thesis. And uh, the, this master thesis was done with uh, my supervisor, which was a couple of um, So let's begin. The, top, the topics of this talk are basically three, three sections. So, in the first section, I want to present what are IFTR theories in a uh, very straightforward and high level way. Then, I will introduce that to define IFTR theories precisely, we need to uh, choose a model. And I will introduce first the model of the set, which is uh, the cost model. And then uh, I will introduce the model which I studied in my master thesis, which is the model of the political So, beginning with kind of category, uh, one I want to study all of this. Uh, basically, I, I uh, previously studied uh, homotopy theory, which is basically a language which allows us to model uh, mathematics inside a uh, uh, programming language. And in particular, homotopy theory uses uh, the fact that each time is modeled by an infinite point. So, uh, any result that I prove proven inside of homotopy theory, for example, uh, results about homotopy theory. Uh, that I wanted to translate to the classical setting, I needed to pass to prove the formalism of infinite points. So I needed to understand how they work and uh, how we can translate those results back to topological spaces. Then I decided to study a less known model of infinite uh, categories, which are the topological categories, mainly to understand why uh, the most popular models are chosen. So I wanted to understand why some are chosen and some not. And finally, I decided to talk about in my uh, final master thesis a particular program, which was uh, showing an uh, alternative model of the political thing to point through a uh, multiple category. I will later define all these terms, so let's see the motivation. So, what is an infinite category? This is the first question that uh, we ask. And basically, it's like a category, but we also have uh, not only objects and morphisms, and we also have n morphisms between n plus n minus one. So, if we have a category like this, very simple category, we could introduce, for example, two morphisms between the one morphism, these three. We, we should have to introduce also all the two identities, but I don't want to do that because the diagram is wrong. And for example, between these two two, item, uh, two morphisms, we can introduce a three morphism. Uh, so, well, so what is the complication? I, I think I can define this a uh, bit easily. The problem is when we want to define this in a way that models the way that uh, homotopies are treated in, in topological space. So when we look uh, at a political space and its higher uh, homotopies, uh, basically what we have is that uh, the composition is not a strict, it's weak. So in these infinite categories, if we doesn't define them as strict uh, infinite categories, and we define them as weak infinite categories, also called infinite one categories normally, then we have to introduce the weak composition. What this implies? For example, for any n morphisms, any three n morphisms, there will be an n plus one morphism that relates the two possible configurations of associativity, but it will not be an equality. The same for units. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? And the, the same thing for units. So uh, between the composition of any morphisms, 
with identity and the, the mosquito itself, it will be an enter mosquito. And so this thing is what complicates the definition basically because the, the, when we define things this way, we cannot define the base category as a category because it will be strict, not weak. So we cannot expand the definition of category in some way. So we need to redefine uh, everything and the, comp the, the complication comes from here. So. And a particular case of infinite categories are infinite groupoids, which are basically infinite categories whose n morphisms are invertible up to n plus one morphisms. So it's uh, invertible in the same sense of groupoids in categories. So if this category is a groupoid, the composition FT will be equal to the identity, and the composition VF will be equal to the group. We do the same thing as before. We will do that, but we so we will have the composition, the identity, and not as in quality, and, and instead a morphism or n plus one morphism. Okay. And this will this will be the idea of an infinite group. It will be all in the field. So as I said, uh, the definition is not trivial when we take this with infinite categories, and its definition is called a model. This is not because each model is not uh, completely equal to the other ones, so they have particularities. They are similar in some way and equivalent in some ways, but not uh, not always. So we have, for example, the first models of uh, infinite category was the models of uh, the globular, the globular model started by Grothendieck, Botani, Berger, etc. Then we have the model of quasi categories that I will explain in the second section. Uh, started by Yuya and Lui. And finally, we have the model of topological categories, which is the one that I want to explain, which is uh, uh, sparked by uh, work from Bertner, was commented by Lui, and then uh, it's expanded uh, by other authors. So, after choosing a model, we could always ask uh, the Grothendieck homotopic hypothesis applied to this model. What is the Grothendieck homotopic hypothesis? Basically, Grothendieck, before uh, having any precise definition of infinity points, uh, stated that any topological space up to homotopy should be essentially the same as an infinity point up to infinite equivalence. And he uh, said that before having the model. So, for him, this was a condition for a good model of infinity points. So basically, this statement gives us that when we choose a model of infinite category and a topological space, it will be a fundamental infinite group point, denoted like this, which is an infinite group point with the same homotopical structure. Okay. So, uh, how we can make precise this statement given a model? How we can model this essentially the same thing? And we do that. The uh, model categories. So, uh, a model category is uh, a, a categorical construction used uh, very much in algebraic topology. Basically, it's a, cat a complete, a complete category with three distinguished classes of morphisms. So, we have weak equivalences, vibrations, and co vibrations, and certain technical conditions that I will go uh, explain to you. But uh, what we can do, if, what we can do, if we have two model categories, we can relate them via a pair of adjoint functors with extra uh, extra conditions, which uh, will be called the Kina equivalence when they respect these model structures in some way and induce an equivalence in the homotopy theories by the model structure. So each model structure uh, allows us to define abstractly homotopy in some sense, not topological, so it's the abstract homotopy. And in some way, when we have a equivalent between two model categories, we're saying that the homotopy theory from one is equivalent to the other. Okay. So using this, we can basically rewrite the statement from before. Uh, so uh, the homotopy hypothesis will be equivalent to finding a zigzag, so it may come to some composable of kinetic equivalences between the categories of topological spaces and the one of infinity. But we, we need to choose a model in topological spaces and a model category in infinity. Because each category can, can have different model categories. So each category can have different model structures. 
Okay, for giving a, a simple example of topological spaces, when we take topological spaces, the, the common model structure used has as weak equivalences the weak homotopy equivalences, which are basically isomorphisms for all uh, n, uh, n uh, dimension homotopy girls, and uh, our ejection in the zero case, which is that set is not a group. And uh, we have also choose uh, the vibrations to be self vibrations, which are basically any map like this, which uh, given any commutative uh, square, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. given any commutative square like this, it will have a lifting path that lifts this homotopy to the base to the, this uh, total. Yeah. So if we choose these maps to be the weak equivalences and these maps to be the vibrations by the actions that I have not presented. The other the of vibrations are uh, fixed and all the model structure works. We, we should have to choose that I uh, to check that if uh, each action is uh, works and that this defines the usual homotopy theory in topological space. So uh, now I will want to explain how we can define, for example, the categories in citizen sets. So for anyone that doesn't know what uh, citizen sets are, uh, first we need to define the simplex category, which is basically a category with uh, objects, the linearly ordered sets, which are basically sets of n plus one elements, and uh, morphisms, the functions that are, that, that are non decreasing typically. It's a simple category. And then we can make uh, precipes over these categories. So we take a simplicial set to be a contravariant functor from this category to the set to the precip. And uh, like all precipes, we can form a, a category mutating these functor simplicial sets and natural transformations as morphisms. And then the category is usually called like this the uh, simplicial set. So uh, to give a little more of intuition, what, what can determine a simplicial set? A simplicial set will be determined by uh, a succession of sets that is called uh, the M synthesis of each, uh, that is denoted by like this or like this, and also the phases and the generalities that are two special types of morphisms of simplicial sets that determine all the others. So, uh, to choose a simplicial set is equivalent to, be, uh, to giving these sets and these two uh, sets of models. Uh, to understand what are the phases and the generalities, we can give, uh, see this uh, nice example from NLAB. So, given a simply, uh, simplicial set X, the X0 will be points, basically. The X1 will be points and, uh, and segments within them forming triangles, and then uh, the X2 will be the points, the segments, and the faces of the thread, and so we can uh, follow that. And then for each, for example, for each phase, we could have three phases, which are those maps, which send the phase itself, the, this is a sigma, to the segments that uh, uh, has as border. Okay. And for the, the segments, the, 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 the faces will be the points, etc. And the other way around, the, the generalities S will be the maps that inject points here and inject points and segments here. For example. Okay. So, uh, some uh, other important examples. We have the standard and simplices, which are basically defined as uh, these functions, which are. Which Turn out to be simplicial sets by Jonelas and something. But basically, they are like the basic triangles, so a point, a segment, a triangle, etc. They are the, the basic blocks of the simplicial sets. And then we have the K horns, which are a sub simplicial set of those things, obtained by removing the, the most uh, great base and one of the sides. So, for example, we have here the two uh, simplex, which is this triangle. If we remove the other the gray face and uh, the, the one contrary to zero, we take that, the one contrary to one, and the same with the, the opposite to zero. So we have these three points. 
And the cases of the forms uh, of zero and n in this case two are special. So we have the, this uh, are called inner forms, and these are called outer forms. This difference uh, matters for the uh, next example, which is uh, basically the definition of quasi categories. A quasi category is a special type of synthesis set which has this property, which basically says for all k, which it's not, uh, it's an inner form, so k different from zero and n, for every map from the form to the to a simplicial set, to the simplicial set that is the quasi category, there is an extension to the full n series. Okay. And we can take this definition and if we expand it to include the outer form, so include the zero and the n, we have the definition of our kind of exactly the same definition. So, uh, basically, why, why these two examples are important? Because basically, this is uh, the two types of simplicial sets that we would choose to model uh, infinite categories. So, quasi categories are basically a model of infinite categories with the M simplexes modeling the M morphism, and can complexes are the models of infinite categories. So, this uh, Outer forms give us the invertibility properties, and this uh, property gives us all the weak and susceptibility and unital properties that we need to define this as infinite categories. Okay. So, uh, my goal is to uh, prove shortly, uh, to show shortly the, the homotopy hypothesis for this case, and for that, we need to choose a model category in simple set. And the idea is that we have two options. So we can choose the Killen model structure, uh, denoted with this Q, which basically models infinite group voids because can complexes are fibrous objects and we better not enter in this uh, what, what fibrous objects are. But basically, the, the homotopy theory that it provides is the respect for infinite group voids. And in the case of uh, the other, which is called Georgian model structure, which denoted with, with a tail. This models infinite categories because the quasi categories are the fiber models. So, in this case, we are interested in taking this one, so we take this category, and we want to find a hidden equivalence or a feedback track of hidden equivalence between this and top of the characteristics. So, to do that, we need, uh, I need to explain uh, shortly this pattern. So, this is a general pattern that can be done in more general cases, but here is applied to simple sets. Called uh, formal normalization, and basically it says that given a com complete logarithm of category, a cosimplicial object, which is a covariant function, we can define a Q nerve uh, like this. It's basically a function from the, this uh, covariant object applied to N to the object from C, from C to simplicial set. And this is always well defined in this condition. And then we can also define uh, a full realization, which is basically another application that goes uh, the other way. So we can put some sets to our general categories and define as this coin is a coin and not an integral. It's basically like a coproduct with a quotient and it's denoted like this because there are no integral, the category is always. So, um, and the, the, the details of, of how this is defined does not matter for the top, but basically, if we have the existence of those two functors, we can also prove that uh, the cooler and cube realization are form and hyperspace. So, basically, we will have an automatic attention between uh, simplicial sets and any category C that we choose with this condition. So, we want to do that with topological space. We need to find a cosimplicial object in topological spaces. And this uh, cosimplicial object is the one that I think that is very well known, which is basically translating this uh, tetrahedron or something to topological spaces as the standard uh, topological uh, inferences. So this is a very well known construction. And this is, in fact, a cosimplicial object. Then uh, the single cosimplicial set, uh, denoted like this, is basically the nerve of this cosimplicial object. This is also a well known factor, and the geometric realization from simplicial sets to topological spaces is the realization from this simplicial set. And then we can, in fact, prove this was a result from Killen in the 1960s that this, uh, this attention is, in fact, a Killen equivalent, it's not only that, uh, proving basically the homotopy hypothesis for simplicial sets. So basically, we have proven that 
the homotopy theory of technical point assignment like this is equivalent to the one of the vectors. And we will be done with simple sources. Okay. So now I want to state topological categories, which are the main uh, study of my of my master thesis. So this is basically a different model of uh, of infinite categories, as I said before. And I need to introduce first the rich category, which is another uh, general categorical construction, but I think that it's uh, easy to, to take that. Basically, if we have a monolithic category, which is Think of it as a category with a product a unique and expected property of a product. We can define an M and which category C as a collection of objects C. And the, the different thing is that we take that the concepts, the sets of morphisms, will not be sets and will be objects of so if we take them to be topological spaces, we will have a topological spaces of morphism. Or if we take similar set, if we take the a normal category with local small category is a, a set rich category. Okay. Then we have to also uh, define the composition map between objects of, of M. That's because we need the, 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 this product to exist and to be a monetary category because it needs to be associative. And then we have also to define the identity. This is all. It does not matter. The idea is the more picture we need. Of this of so then we can define a topological category as a category in rich in topological spaces, compactly generated because uh, technical things, but uh, the compactly generated topological spaces are with an equivalent to topological spaces, so I put that model homotopically. And then we define the category of all topological categories and topological factors within them as this topological. Then each topological category models an infinite category. Okay, it's uh, this uh, basically will define the higher homotopies of the map spaces to be the higher homotopies. So an homotopy in the concept will be an homomorphism in the infinite category, which should prove that uh, this has uh, the associativity and the things that we need to do associativity, but it can be true. Then we can define also uh, for each topological category, its homotopy category, which are, it's basically a, a real category, it's not a topological category, constructed by taking the same objects as the topological category and then the uh, path components of the homotopies, which are such. And finally, a topological category is an infinite point if it HC, this homotopy category, is a good point. We basically have that uh, the home sets as topological spaces are weakly vertical, and we only need to ask that this homotopy category, which is like zero level, is also. So, um, now to finish the talk, I just want to prove the, the homotopy of group. So, the homotopy hypothesis for this model. For that, I need to define a function like before, but it will be more than one, but I define the main one, which was the main uh, object of the study of my master thesis, which is the homotopy of For defining it, we need to define a simple category, which is a category in which it's in these sets, set of uh, topological spaces, denoted like this, as we said uh, from the example of before. Then uh, we will define this homotopy of Fermat formal nerve, so we define a simplicial object, which is a simplicial category, defined with objects being the zero to uh, the, the sets of n plus one elements, and the morphisms are basically some type of simplicial cubes, which are not really are not equivalent to a simplicial category. So they, they are uh, a bit complicated, com combinatorially complicated thing, but uh, we have one of them in the in its home set and they are not they, they are easy to do. I, I would say. But uh, then we can define uh, this the nerve from this position object to be the work of the nurse, the not like this, and the realization from this position object to be the simplicial part, the part the not like this. And then we have a very powerful result by Louis and others saying that there is a kind of equivalence between. Simplicial set categories 
and uh, simplicial categories and uh, simplicial set with the Jojan models. So, uh, how we can recap this? So, we want to prove an autopic hypothesis for topological categories. So, we want to relate the political categories in some way to topological categories. We have the result from with four. We know the relation from topological spaces to simple sets with hidden, which has a hidden components. We also uh, can use this uh, exactly in its uh, home set of simplicial categories and uh, topological categories. And we get another hidden equivalence. Then we can put here the hidden equivalence of the water of the earth, and we take uh, from simplicial sets to simplicial sets with the Julian construction. And the problem goes for this uh, last connection. So to connect uh, the Julian and Kilian model structure, we need two functors named k under strike and k upper strike, which are a localization adjunction, and they are not a hidden so we, we don't have a clinical direct equivalence between topological spaces and topological categories, which makes sense because topological categories model infinite categories, not infinite group. So if we instead restrict that to infinite group points, we can show that the composition of those three functors is in fact a equivalence, and we have this zigzag of clinical equivalence. So this uh, finishes the proof of the homotopy hypothesis in this case. And uh, it, it, this is a tool that was well known, but it was like formalized by Solani after the reference uh, later. And it was uh, worked out uh, with other notations and methods by Jan McCarthy and a student here at the University of Barcelona. And it has been also worked out in my master thesis. And then, uh, if you recall the motivation, I have uh, another question in the another topic in the in the introduction that was uh, about group path categories. That thing basically it's uh, another way to construct the infinite, uh, the fundamental infinite group point that we have here. So, if we apply to any topological space C and the, the composition of the uh, uh, the three factors, the K and the right the simplicial path and then reach a uh, generalization, we get the fundamental infinite group point of this model. But uh, the composition of those functors is not trivial. It's combinatorial, but it's a, a very combinatorial structure. So uh, we, so, uh, especially the, the simplicial path functor, it's a very not trivial one. So we wanted to approach this in some other way and find a very natural model for this. Uh, Infinite funda fundamental infinite group points. And uh, basically, uh, this was presented first as uh, the work of McCarthy, and then I finished some proof that we will back. So we felt the need to define more path category, which are, are all candidates to the fundamental infinite point. A more path category is basically denoted like this with the M here. It's an infinite group point in the sense of a topological category with uh, as objects the points of the topological space X. Then its home set is the more path spaces, in which what are more path spaces? They are like path spaces, but with path from zero to R, and the R depends on the, on the path. So we can have paths from zero to one, from zero to two, from zero to three, and they are composed. Okay. And the fact uh, why we choose this is basically because the composition, when, when we take these variable paths, it's a strict. So we can define this as a category, a topological category, because they are topological spaces, but as, as a topological category. And basically, this is the formula of composition. Basically, it's the composition that we expect from uh, always, but we preserve the sum of the length of the okay. So, uh, to, re to cover, uh, to recap, I, I need to introduce the final concept, which is the uh, declassifying phase. So, given a topological group G, we can define V of G as the classifying space as a portion of a weakly con contractible space V of G by a proper reaction of G. This is a well known topological concept. Then we can generalize this to include group like topological moments using contorial classifying spaces, for example, in the field of classifying space. But when, when we do this, it's not that easy definition, so I, I have not put the definition. But you can imagine something like if you know that many spaces is similar, it coincides when you take a topological group, but it's more uh, 
general what it will take a topology time. Then the Murpas space of a point by itself, which will be the function of the Murpas category of a point, uh, it's basically a group line topology time. Okay, it's usually denoted like this because it's like the more loop uh, space. And for each uh, topological monoid, we can take at the lab the looping functor that it uh, basically uh, generates a topological category with one object and the topological monoid that forms it. So, to finish, uh, what uh, I have done in my master thesis is proven this theorem, which basically says that. Uh, given a uh, path connected well point in topological space, then the, this topological space, which is the application of the more uh, loop path space of X, the looping, then the enriched singular subdivision set, then the motor to and then the metricalization, it's in fact a classifying space for this model. So it, it coincides with the usual definition of classifying space. And in fact, because we are using a uh, loop space, we get an extra consequence, which is this uh, weak homotopy between the, the construction, this the construction of the autobiographical things, to the space, the space itself. And what I want, why I want to study that, or why I want to prove that, basically because the proof that the infinite point of the moon path category being a uh, weak equivalent to the expected fundamental point from earlier. This is a, a direct corollary from, from this point. So if we prove the theorem that we have done, then the, the, the proof of this, which is not trivial, becomes trivial. So basically, uh, thanks to proving this theorem, we, we get this result and we have this uh, pretty manager, uh, easy to use uh, structure for every topological space. So for topological spaces where we know very well the higher homotopy, we can use this instead of all these complex combinatories. And until here, are my thoughts. So, as I said, uh, the main reference for topological categories are the work of Antrani and Lurie. Lurie also is uh, this actually is a uh, reference for, for all the topic of different categories. Then you have here my master thesis, which goes in with the previous theorem, the proof that we propose, and uh, it tries to do a little bit of relation with automated theorem at the end. And finally, you have also the, the work of uh, Jan McCarthy, which was a bachelor thesis previous to my work, and he basically revealed the, the, this talk in the much more detail. And I'm taking my presentation, and thank you for listening.